I just change the topic on something here? I, I wrote a blog about uh, something this weekend, and uh, I, I think it's it's something that is pretty interesting. Baseball lost a couple of really uh, superb uh, Hall of Famers on the weekend. Uh, Stan Musial, who, uh, well, I'll ask you this. Uh, who's first on the all-time hits list in baseball? Pete Rose. That's right. And second is Ty Cobb, who rose right. past. Both of them, the only two guys over 4,000. I'll tell you who's third. It's Henry Aaron. And, you know, when you think about it, that makes sense, too. Who's fourth? Is it Stan the Man? It is Stan the Man yeah. Musial. And he died on Friday night at the age of 90. I was too young to see him. I'm too <coughs> old. Uh, sorry, I was not old enough to see him play. I've seen all the highlights. Number six, left-handed bat. I mean, the man in St. Louis, impeccable career. Hall of Fame material. Twenty two years. He, he, interesting. I looked I looked over his schedule, over over his playing career. Um, he was a, an outfielder uh, for most of his career. Be, played over three thousand games. But he you, usually you'd see like a guy like Yastrzemski, for instance, was in left field there. I think Ted Williams played left field there in in in, uh, in Fenway, and and uh, they stayed in that one position for most of the time. I mean, you know, late in your career, you may go to first base or something like that, but. But the point is, with, with Musial, he played 900 games in, in uh, right field, uh, almost 800 games in left, <coughs> uh, 300 and some odd in center. He played over 1,000 at first base. Um, he was a hitting machine and, uh, and a guy who was a, you know, a class act all the way along. If you're in the Toronto area, I remember he did an interview. It was pretty famous for a while with, uh, with Mike Hogan on the fan. And I don't know why Hogan called him, but Stan was obviously not in a good mood. And Hogan had asked him something that he didn't like the way the, the tenor of the, the uh, thing was going and hung up on him. And uh, so people here might say, well, you know, he was a jerk. He, he was anything but. He's a class act who represented his city uh, for the longest time. And uh, matter of fact, I, I believe was still in St. Louis when he died. He was still, you know, he, he, uh, he ended up being an icon in that city. And, uh, yeah, he died on Friday night. Saturday morning, yeah, quick, quick. early Saturday morning, uh, on, uh, of all things, uh, a Baltimore Orioles fantasy cruise, uh, we lost another great one. And this guy was completely different. Uh, the stories about Earl Weaver are incredible. He, but for my money, one of the best managers ever. This is a guy who was way ahead of his time in terms of, of uh, uh, getting matchups that he wanted, he knew who, who uh, you know, the left-right combinations, things. Anything he did was to get an edge. He was also maybe the best umpire baiter of all time, better even than Lou Pinella. He would get into shouting matches. We're seeing one right here. He was always, uh, you know, combative and in your face. And Ron Luciano wrote a book and dedicated a whole check chapter to <laughs> to him. Yeah, to, and he hated him. Oh, oh, God, you know. But the thing about Weaver was. <laughs> They, they respected Weaver as a manager. And, and here's the amazing thing. He managed them, he took over midway through the 1968 season and stayed with them till 1982, won four American League pennants during that time and one World Series, never had a losing season ever until he came back in 85 and 86. And only in his last season did he have the losing season. I mean, that was, and people went, well, the game has passed him by. Nothing was further from the truth. What happened was he had a bad team. Um, they, I think they won 73 games. I guarantee you, without Earl Weaver, they win 60. So he was, he was a class act. I think one of the best quotes I can, I can think of about him, and I, I mentioned it in the blog, Jim Palmer was part of that one of the, the, the great uh, rotations that they had there. And uh, Palmer said, to, said about Earl Weaver, the only thing he knows about curveballs is he couldn't hit one. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he was something else. I think the most remarkable thing about Earl Weaver is he lived to the age of 82 from smoking five, oh, yeah. five packs of cigarettes well, a day, to, you know. He, 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 had, he always had one burning down the <clears throat> down the, the runway from that. I can only tell you, uh, I mean, I was I remember once calling him up. Something had come up to get him on the radio station. And uh, in the days when I was young and very eager, I'd, uh, I'd found out that he had a manager, a guy who was kind of a friend of his, but he was a guy that would handle or just field calls uh, for PR ap appearances for Earl, which he got a lot of, obviously, because he was a very colorful character. And he gave me his number at home. And uh, I uh, and uh, he said, you got to just watch for Earl. He said he'd be golfing today. 
He says you'll know very quickly in the conversation whether he played well today or whether he didn't, <laughs> or in fact whether he had played nine and has been in the clubhouse since then. <laughs> so I called and I called all day long and there was no answer. And at five o'clock that night I called, and uh, I and he answered the phone. Oh, and I said, oh, you know, and I said, uh, Mr. Weaver, of course. Uh, this is a Toronto Blue Jays radio organization calling you. Uh, this come up and uh, my name is Brian Angus. And I'd just like to know if, uh, if I could possibly get you to come on and say a few words in the radio. He said, what's your name? And I said, Brian Angus. He says, Angus? He says, I don't want to hear from you on this phone, on the radio, on TV, or even in the clubhouse. Lose this number right away, you son of a bitch, and never call me again. And that's, what he, that's the only conversation I ever had with Earl Weaver. He hung up the phone. Ron Luciano he didn't used play to, well that day. No, no, no. Because I, I phoned his manager back. I said, thanks a lot for that. That just buried that. He said, I warned you. He must have you know, had a bad round because that's the way that he is. So competitive. But uh, he, was, he was all entertainment, and he was blessed with a hell of a ball club down oh, there. Oh, he was. It, with it, those five pitchers they had down there. And you there, mentioned you know, it, Smoke. He, I mean, he used to talk about that he had one of his closers was Don Stanhouse. They called him Stan the Man Unusual. <laughs> this is a, well, ironic considering Stan the Man Musial. Yeah. But the the uh, the thing with 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 Stanhouse was he was one of those guys who would uh, he he'd get the save, but he you know he'd walk the bases loaded to do it. And and Weaver would like he'd smoke a pack. He said I oh, smoke a pack whenever I, he's out there. You know, uh, <laughs> it's hysterical. The stories about Earl Weaver. They're so true, and like you said, yours is a great example of just that. He was one of those just guys. Lose it, you was... son of a... And and something happened here with the tarp. <laughs> what was it about the tarp that happened? I don't know if you remember that story. I shouldn't tell you the bus, but something happened with the with the tarp. He either didn't want it rolled up, or he did want it rolled up, or he wouldn't play with the tarp where it was. That's right. That's what it was. Somebody hurt him. So that's what it was. It was here in Toronto, and they had the tarp rolled up against. Uh, down the the first baseline. That's right. And he and he pulled his team off the field. He wouldn't let them play until right. they moved the tarp from yeah. where it was. And you know, I mean, he, he he was a very ordinary guy. But obviously, his players went to the to the wall for him. You know, uh, he was the type of guy that uh, was just like the little general behind the scenes. That's there. exactly. I think that was his nickname. Him, you know? I think you know, he's five foot seven. He was not. A, he, he hadn't been much of a player. As a spark. a lot of guys were like that. And uh, managers at some point, he had those spark plug type spark plug type guys. The guy Guys who were, you know, fiery, and that's always a word that was used for Earl Weaver. Um, but they knew the game, and they certainly knew how to get you going. You know, they, the thing with with uh, with Weaver was he knew what buttons to push. Palmer apparently hated him, but at the same time respected him, which is probably that's not a bad situation to be in. Palmer was Jim one of Palmer, the star pitchers, again, of the, he, he, Hall of Famer, he had, all time. He great. had a starting rotation for a few years in Baltimore <laughs> that was second to none. Jim Palmer well, was the, the last of rotation stuff. to have four twenty game wins. Yeah. Uh, Jim Palmer, Mike Cuellar, uh, uh, the lefty that uh, pitched for years afterwards and came up here to Toronto to pitch for well, I should not McNally, uh, Dave McNally. Dave McNally was in there as well. Um, but anyways, and the other I'll, one was. Uh, I'll, I'll have the rest of the names for you. Dawson. Just really. Why? Why? Why you're Dawson. doing that? I just wanted to mention. I did pull <laughs> this up on, on Stan the Man Usual. Ten, th- almost eleven thousand at bats. Mm-hmm. And a three thirty one batting average. Oh yeah, incredible! Nearly yeah. five hundred home runs. And he had an unusual. He 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 was a his swing. Yeah. I can remember seeing his stance. Very unusual stance. Very. Uh, um, I can't even explain it. The bat was held high, and he was kind of crunched down low. Uh, but boy, when he twenty two years, ball, all with oh St. Louis, God. three World Series titles, five NL MVP awards, seven National League batting titles. In the Hall of Fame since 1969. You mentioned Luciano, by the way, on Weaver. Yes. <laughs> Weaver was actually twice ejected before a game, both times by Ron Luciano. <laughs> yeah, he, he hated Luciano. And Luciano used to have this thing with his gun. When he called a guy out, he would just point his finger like yeah. that with a gun at him. And Earl Weaver just drove him crazy. And it's a funny thing, as I was watching the highlights when, when Earl Weaver passed away, how things have changed nowadays. Nowadays, if you touch... If you touch yeah. an umpire or something like that, you're in big trouble with the league. You will see, I'm sure you've seen if you've been watching the highlight packages, that he had his finger stuck in guys' faces like that, and the umpires were grabbing his hand and getting it out. Of, like, they would actually grab his hand, and, yeah. oh, yeah. and he would take it right back and stick it in, in their face just to annoy them. And uh, he, was, he, he, was, he was one of a kind, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a sad day to see him go. But as I say, he, he had a very, very good innings for a guy who smoked as much as he did.